I believe the XRP community understands, more than anybody else in crypto, that most cryptocurrencies are doomed and will not be included in our future banking. System this video, I'll explain why I believe XRP will be a successful cryptocurrency. We received an important piece of data today that demonstrates that the elite government institutions and major financial players recognize XRP's potential role in the future financial system. I'd like to convey what I witnessed today. This reinforces my belief that XRP will be one of the few cryptocurrencies to survive when the dust settles. At the end of the film, I'd also like to discuss the present situation of the market. I'd want to explain why I think price action has been so uninteresting recently. But I also want to show you why I'm optimistic about what can happen next. Therefore, I'd want to begin this video by showing you. You have a clip from earlier today's Twitter conversation with Ryan Salkis about Gary Gensler and the SEC. Now I'd like to show you this video. Because Ryan Salkis takes on Gary Gensler and the SEC, he also says a lot of things that I believe everyone should hear right now. I admire what Ryan Salkis is doing here. Here's one of the few people who is willing to stand up to Gary Gensler and the SEC. He says what's on his mind, even if it may come back to bite him in the future. I appreciate it when folks do it. I simply wanted to show you this video, because he is hell-bent on getting Gary and me. I believe you will all like hearing it. It simply cannot be said any other way. Dishonest and crooked, not because he makes terrible decisions, scammers and bad people should be arrested by the SEC, and what do you know? This is how many people participate, we don't have to. It's already illegal, but if you want to perform your job and be a hero, why don't you go after Voyagers? Rather than inviting them to your office, such as Celsius Genesis and Fort Jax. Do your job instead of going after celebrities who can't tolerate him because he's a political donor. This isn't because he's disrespectful or we're attempting to take advantage of him. It's because he's lousy at legal arbitrage. He lies and he is completely controlled by Elizabeth Lauren, who is anti-crypto fraudsters and wields considerable power in this government. That's simply how things are, so you know, I suppose. People are afraid to talk about politics in general, and I've certainly opened myself up to criticism and been a lightning rod, but some of the things I've stated in the last two years are still true, which is unfortunate, and I believe most people think that if there isn't a change of guard in this administration, people should relocate abroad. It appears to be over in the United States, therefore I thought that was a terrific piece of work by Ryan Selkis that goes to the heart of the subject. Gary Gensler is not disliked because he is cruel, or because he is working hard on several initiatives. People are angry about Gary Gensler. Because he refuses to go after scammers, he hasn't heard about any incidences involving people who were only trying to be honest and do good. We're in big difficulty in this business. I think Ryan Selkis did a terrific job, and I believed what he had to say was essential, especially when it came to politics. I don't talk about politics very much, but it's evident that the government, or at least a big portion of the government, is opposed to cryptocurrencies, and we hope that will change before the elections. I doubt it will happen right now. Because I only vote for one party, cryptocurrency, I will vote for any candidate. Who is willing to come out and declare they favor cryptocurrency? I wish cryptocurrency wasn't so crucial in politics right now, but it is, and I hope we don't have to worry about it. We won't have to worry about what crooked bureaucrats are doing all the time because cryptocurrencies will soon have the rules they need to thrive in the United States. But now I want to talk about a piece of data I saw earlier today that I believe is critical for determining which coins will be there in the future. I was quite excited when I first saw this, since it offers us a pretty excellent picture of what the world's most important institutions believe. So we saw a tweet from the Ministry of Finance earlier today, claiming that he had met with IMF officials to discuss the XRP system is the cornerstone of their CBC is so amazing. Because, as you may recall, the IMF went insane when El Salvador adopted Bitcoin as a currency a few years ago, or around a year ago today. They indicated they would cease supplying money to El Salvador. They tried to get El Salvador to reverse its position. So essentially, the IMF was furious at El Salvador for going out of its way to make Bitcoin a legitimate form of currency. 
I was intrigued after seeing that. To test how the IMF would react to a country going out of its way like Palau, it was difficult to develop a tvetk on the XRP system. The same thing will happen with the IMF. They will freak out when they learn that Palau is building. We discovered their cavit with the XRP ledger, a public blockchain, today. That it does not appear to be the case. Jay is effectively praising the IMF for coming out and meeting with them to discuss how Palau is innovative. This shows me that the XRP system is fine with the world's largest institutions. They don't mind at all. If countries use the XRP system to construct CBGCs, this is exciting because there was a lot of backlash when El Salvador embraced Bitcoin and people were going crazy, telling her she couldn't do it, but it appears like everything is good. When they use the XRP system, they have to deal with it. This is critical for the future, because as more countries consider adopting. With this technology, we want to make sure they are supported and do not receive a lot of negative criticism. We discovered today that it appears that countries can work on the XRP system without receiving pushback. From other countries, which is a significant achievement, I believe that in the future, large organizations such as the IMF will work hard to ensure that particular technologies prevail. I'd like to emphasize that the XRP system has never been clear for me to be on their side. We've seen Brad Garlinghouse meet with IMF members numerous times. Many IMF members have spoken about Ripple and XRP, but this was just talk. Finally, we may use a real-world example to question how the IMF operates. Look at this, when a country adopts the XRP ledger, we discovered that their reaction to Bitcoin was much better than that of another country, which I think shows what will happen when the dust settles and governments start cracking down on this, I think it's pretty clear that XRP will be on the right side of this, so I'm willing to end this movie by talking about why the market has been going nowhere, and why we haven't in anything interesting, and I, because I believe I have a pretty unique perspective on what's going on, we're living. Many individuals will tell you that we are entering a downturn or recession during a difficult time, but not as many will be able to tell you that. Almost every business is making more money than ever before. I'm just showing you this one since it was the first that popped up, but a doe, like practically every other S&P 500 company, the company is outperforming earnings by a large margin, and it is one of the most powerful companies in the world right now. Whereas the typical person suffers greatly, it's awful and stinks, but the average person does not drive the price when, when it comes to market purchases. Huge institutions, big enterprises, and companies like Adobe and Apple are involved. So, if they're doing well, markets will do well overall. And we find that analysts continue to predict that these companies will fail their targets or have poor results, but they continue to outperform those forecasts. So, what else are we supposed to do? Keep a lookout for Calthed inflation. Inflation is to blame for our current situation. Inflation has been a major issue in the United States, and the fact that we had to raise interest rates to fight it is a major reason why the market hasn't done well. We can see that there is interest. Rates have dropped down a cliff. Yes, we got a few poor data points, but in the big picture, inflation is falling dramatically, so what's happening? Many people believed that breaking down inflation would cause black swans to occur in the market and that firms would lose a lot of money due to the rise in interest rates, which were meant to kill him. As we can see, the majority of businesses are still profitable. They are still making good money and prices are falling, which suggests we are preparing to land the plane as prices decreased and everyone believed the plane would crash. But since inflation is currently declining and businesses are still doing well, why are we doing all of this? Why am I even bringing this up? If you look closely, Wall Street did figure out what was going on. You can see that the stock price of NVIDIA is considerably above its all-time high because Wall Street determined that interest rates did not influence NVIDIA. It doesn't appear like NVIDIA's business will suffer a downturn, therefore they re-entered the fray. NVIDIA did so in a significant way currently, if you look at. This image allows me to say only a few words. We already know that most other cryptos are built on Bitcoin. What we can observe is that Bitcoin and NVIDIA both peaked around December 2021. They both collapsed after that.
Since the Federal Reserve began to raise interest rates, none of the major Wall Street corporations or investors have concluded that NVIDIA will be right. NVIDIA will get through this, and the stock price will rise right now. Bitcoin is located at a location that reminds me of a lot of where NVIDIA was right here, struck rock bottom, recovered, and then needed money from Wall Street to keep operating. It needed Wall Street to tell the stock market that everything would be fine. Okay, I believe the same thing will occur. With Bitcoin, I believe the price deal is simply being held up. A lot of thinking has gone into FTX Binance, which has kept the price down, but I believe NVIDIA will continue to grow. Similarly, the values of these two assets are fairly close. I believe Bitcoin will catch up as long as we have a leading indicator, which I believe is NVIDIA inflation, and firms continue to invest. Keep doing well, and in the end, I think Bitcoin is just dealing with a lot of things in the market that have caused FUD, which is why it hasn't caught up more quickly. But I think that when these things kind of go away, and people understand that Bitcoin and XRP will be fine, no matter what happens to FTX or Binance, a lot of the price appreciation that these crypto assets have been missing out on will come back in a big way. I believe that this monotonous time in nowhere is coming to an end. This relocation is approaching owner. Let's see what happens, but everything seems to be going well so far. Thank you very much. For the upcoming boys, I hope you enjoyed this update, and if you did, please like the video and subscribe for more.